Hello, everybody. Welcome to a special edition of the show with no name, a pre-recorded edition. Very unusual. But today, had to do a pre-record because we have a special guest. This is Shawnee Hale from Loot Crate Anime, a.k.a. Hey. What's your Twitter? Pick your Twitter. Agent, Agent Shawnee. <laughs> A, it's right, Agent Shot. Agent. That's, a, that's a pretty easy one. I probably should have known <laughs> that one. There you are. And she is the social media manager, community manager for Loot Crate Anime. Yep. So we're going to start off, as uh, all of these terrible interviews tend to start off, with just a basic intro of you and uh, some basic questions. Uh, and, you know, so we've already got who you are. That was easy. And tell me a little bit about how, <laughs> so Loot Crate's in L.A., so you're you, you're in L.A. now, yeah. right? So how did you end up in L.A.? Yeah. I'm one of, I'm one of the rare born and raised in L.A. people. <laughs> a Los Angeles I'm native. A native. That is rare. Wow. Yeah. That's like <laughs> mega super rare. Um, I'm always amazed when I, get a, when I get a Lyft driver in L.A. and they're a native. I'm like, wow, you live here. So you've, you grew up in, LA, in the valley itself or in the yeah. neighboring area? Uh, I grew up in Redondo Beach, which is in a Los Angeles beach city, where everyone is from Redondo Beach. And then when I moved to Burbank, I was like, no one's from Burbank? <laughs> so I, it was kind of weird. I didn't know that no one was from L.A. until I left my little beach town. <laughs> Does that give you an advantage for jobs in L.A.? Because, like, I mean, it must. Because, like, a lot of times when people look at jobs in L.A., they're like, oh, but then I'd have to move to L.A. and it costs so much money. But you were already there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't have to move. <laughs> That's a pretty, pretty big advantage. Do you, I've had. <laughs> do you commute from Redondo? No, I'm currently living in Burbank, and um, Loot Crate is in downtown Los Angeles, so I commute like 20 to 30 minutes. And for Los Angeles, that's like nothing. I mean, people... Yeah. Right, right. That's like a tiny distance. I mean, uh, when I was My there... My last commute Go ahead, sorry. was over an hour for my last job. <laughs> so this is much better. Yeah. All right, yeah, then. I was really excited to cut that down. Everybody, yeah, I mean, I commute about 45 minutes right now, and I would very much like to not have that. So I have to ask, your your title on LinkedIn is Professional Shit Poster? <laughs> how, did that, how did that come <laughs> yeah. about? Uh, I'm, I'm not a very professional. <laughs> I asked I've, if they put that on my uh, cards that we create and I said no. <laughs> I think your, your business card says social media manager, right? Or does it say community manager? Yeah. It just says uh, community manager. I, well, I'm a senior community manager. <laughs> Climbing but, up that uh, corporate ladder. Senior I, community manager. If you, if, you look, if you look at all of the loot anime posts, they are pretty uh, pretty, pretty meme and. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you do get and, paid to meme for a living, so that's a pretty solid... Yeah. That's a pretty solid like thing that people would want to do someday. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, definitely. Today I made the Snapchat hot dog in replace of a Titan uh, for Attack on Titan for National Hot Dog Day. So. We definitely yeah. retweeted that this morning. I was like, oh, that's, that was Shawnee. That's that's a classic. <laughs> yeah. Could have been this the... morning and I'll National Hot Dog Day. I know exactly what I can do. Yeah, that was... Uh... Yeah, I was impressed. You come up with a lot of great ideas. I mean, I guess Photoshop and you know, and, and time spent. It's definitely one of those things that you you can uh, really do a lot of great, <laughs> a lot of great memes that way. Uh, the creativity. I do love Photoshop. <laughs> right, it's probably your your most used tool. Or After Effects, maybe one of the yep. two. All right, so now we're gonna do. I don't a know little... how to use After Effects. Oh really? It's it's actually um, I I'm not an expert at it, but I know a little bit because like our, we did our video intro in After Effects. It, it's it's pretty cool tool. It has like any time, anything you can think of you can do in After Effects. Just a question of how long it takes you to do it because it sometimes takes like four years to do it, and you're like, um, the amount of time I'm spending on this is not really worth <laughs> the, the seven seconds of animation I will get. I've been doing YouTube for since 2007. And I have never opened After Effects. <laughs> that actually is impressive. So that's a good a good segue into our little our little personal about you section. So now we're going to talk about you a little bit. So you started off on YouTube and you started off in the space. Basically, Luke Cray basically hired you because you had a massive social media following and YouTube channel that was already in existing. I think you have an insane number of followers on Twitter, uh, twenty thousand or something. Yeah, like that, I guess. Right? <laughs> 
two hundred and something thousand. <laughs> oh, I only missed one zero. Come on. I'm yeah. nearing a quarter of a million. Two hundred and fifty k. Actually, but, it's funny because uh, I made the same mistake when we when we spoke at Anime Expo. But yeah, I missed a zero. <laughs> Yeah, Twitter and YouTube, and and I've also worked for a lot of other YouTube channels, so I have a bit of a history with that. Um, I worked for uh, the Fine Brothers for, on a, a series called My Music, and then I worked for Olga K and uh, uh, the Key of Awesome singer, uh, Lord Francesca. So, like, I was working with other YouTubers as well to, like, make ends meet, because a channel by yourself isn't exactly like a substantial income. <laughs> right, right, right. And especially since you know, now, like with Adpocalypse and everything, I mean, we don't make any money from our YouTube channel at all. We don't have a lot of. Oh, I don't even but... put ads on <laughs> anymore zero. now that I have a full time job. So, uh, I I was actually asked to model for a company called We Love Fine uh, from my YouTube channel. Uh, they wanted me to do a V and Puppy Cat. Photo shoot because Bee and Puppy Cat was a YouTube web series at the time, and so I did that photo shoot. And their social media person quit a couple days later, and they were like, "Hey, would you be interested in doing our social media?" And that's how I ended up doing social media professionally. And the rest is history, as they say. Yeah. <laughs> so I actually have some, some somewhere back behind me in this land of anime weeaboo crap. There's some Bee and Puppy Cat stuff. I think it's on the shelf, which you can't quite see. But yeah, there's <laughs> some in my Hall of Fame there. Um, and we love fine makes some. But behind me, just imagine behind me, I <laughs> have right. those stupid QB IKEA shelves, and they're full of figures and uh, various anime things. Um, in my this is my my little studio. I don't have a professional studio, but I have a, you know spare bedroom studio. It's pretty nice. It works well enough. Yeah, better than this cubicle. <laughs> That's true. Uh, I hit behind you. <laughs> I mean, there's like you know, there's a Luke wall. Craig does it normally. <laughs> yeah, I would have thought it was a little bit more. You know, um, I guess the word I'm looking for is like cheerful in that in their loot. It must be like a conference room, huh? All right, hang on one second, Shawnee. Skype is behaving as Skype Skype usually does. I had to avoid saying a bad word there. Um, so, if we could just go back and that last answer again. Because I think it, I'm, I'm not sure if it was internet or Skype, but one of the two decided that it wasn't going to keep up. So, okay, you want me to start from why I'm in the conference room? Oh yeah, yeah. I was. Uh, I we can just go back basically to answer. You know, I was. I just mentioned that I thought the conference room would be more cheerful, but it was a conference room, so then you can just go from there. Perfect. Okay. Uh, yeah, I rented out a conference room in our office because I sit with the entire community team, and we have lots of fun stuff and figures on our desks. But you know. The, I didn't want to interrupt their day or get like stop them from talking, so I moved to a quieter spot. <laughs> so your office is kind of like a like a war room style, where you guys all kind of are in the same area, and then the community team just kind of all works together and does like collaborative stuff all the time. Um, the community sits together like we're in different sections, but our community team does sit together. Nice, that's pretty so, cool. Anime's around the corner in another section, like a full anime team. I go sit over there and bug them all the time. <laughs> right. So the, the anime, the Loot Crate anime team itself is separate from the, the community team because the community team probably does all of the Loot Crate community because there's, there's so much involved in Loot Crate now. There's like, what, five boxes now? There's more than that. There's a lot. <laughs> there's quite a few. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, God, yeah. There, well, yeah. I guess I wasn't counting the, the specific gaming crates and stuff. There's like five, I guess, pop culture crates is what they call them. And there's yeah. a sound. There's a sound real crate now. That's a thing. I need to order that. Yep, it's a quarterly, it's a quarterly, um, quarterly crate, and it's a lot bigger and has a lot more high-end items in it because uh, it's a little more expensive, and you only get it every three months. I need to order me some sound Rio. Although I have run out of space for like <laughs> desk and other items, my my house overflows. I actually purchased a house just to put my figures and other things in. You know, at least that's what I tell people. You know, so that I can have enough room <laughs> for all my weeaboo crap. <laughs> so much of it. There's posters. Only we had that really. luxury in Los Angeles. <laughs> yeah, buying a house in LA, you gotta do time travel back to like um, 1960. Yeah, otherwise, good luck. Yeah. Yep. 
Yeah, so I mean, that's pretty cool. I've never worked in a collaborative office environment. I definitely think it'd be pretty neat to have like people around you working in like a sort of a pit style. Um, I did a, a tiny bit of research for this, and one of the people, other other like social media teams that I researched was Taco Bell because there's an incredible amount of information about Taco Bell's social media team out there, and they have this like war room that's just covered in televisions that they meet in every morning, and it's like it literally looks like um, if you've seen the war room like from what's that '80s movie ah with global thermonuclear war brain it's called war games really it's called war games i literally said the two words <laughs> in the sentence yeah so if you've ever seen the war room from war games which is in, which is a mock-up of the inside of norad and it's just like all these screens that show up that's what their social media room looks like and it's like oh my god that looks like the coolest place in the world to work uh, it looks like a network operations center I, i've worked in networking before and network operations centers are also very cool places to work yeah, I haven't seen the Taco Bell one, but um, my friend Chris works there, and uh, he says it's great. <laughs> that is pretty cool. Yeah, they have like they're they've been really open recently about their PR. I guess um, like there was a big story in USA Today about it, and there's been some stories in Business Insider about it. It's been really interesting to see the kind of shift in social media from like traditional PR companies over to these more like I guess organic style hire a fan to do the job because that's what the fans want to see kind of thing and it's it's a really seismic shift mm -hmm. in how pr has been working recently and i think it, it showcases a lot of creative talent that's come up from like just organic creative talent that's not come up through the traditional marketing sense but has come up through the idea of you know people who work and like grassroots kind of style like i know your background is, i don't really know your background but i know that you actually also helped found hentai hq and a couple of other things that you've worked on <laughs> Let's talk, I guess we can talk a little bit about your background, because I'm not super familiar with it. So you, you mentioned that you had worked for a lot of other companies, and you kind of did, like you said, you did PR for We Love Fine, which, like, if you don't know what We Love Fine is, guys, it's like, they make plushies, and they import stuff from Japan. They're pretty cool. They're at pretty much every convention. They, they don't import stuff from Japan. Most of their stuff is, uh, I mean, right now they're carrying Good Smile stuff, because Val makes them, but... Uh, um, so they run the Valve store for Valve, who does Portal and um, Half Life and okay. Dota, and then they have their own store called We Love Fine, which where they sell clothes and plushies, and it's all officially licensed and it's all designed in house, and it's pretty cool. They did the My Little Pony chibis that people really like. There's one behind me. Again, you can't see behind <laughs> me, but there is one behind me. Um, there's also a Rainbow Dash plush. I think is theirs as well from behind me. And um, I have a couple of their plushies for sure. I like their plushies. They make good quality plushies, which are surprisingly my, hard to find. My friend designs those plushies, so it's very. <laughs> That's pretty cool. That's you. You have a, you have a lot of friends that do a lot of cool things. Well, I worked there for almost two years, so it was. I, I made some lasting friendships, definitely. That's good. That's a, a good indicator that a company is you know has a good healthy work culture and. You know, it's fun to work there. They get to make a lot of lasting friends. So yeah. now this is a question more towards like people who may want to go in towards your towards the same type of job that you're doing. Do you think it's more valuable to like pursue a college degree for marketing and like that kind of stuff? Or do you think it's more valuable to just go out and do it? Uh, I think both paths work um, when I'm in my 30s. So when... Uh, when I was college age, there was no social media marketing courses mm -hmm. in college. Like, that did not exist. I was too busy in the school of life for social media. Like, I was coming up with these social media, pro like, um, sites. I was on MySpace, and then I went on to Facebook. And I just came up, like, I, like, grew up with them. And now people have the option to go to college for that, which I have no idea what that experience is like, so I would never want to say, don't do that. So I think both paths. Could work. I will say that I think it's pretty hard to college the type of creativity that comes out of accounts like the Arby's Twitter and <laughs> your Twitter and you know um, today there was actually a story that ran in one of the publications that I read uh, the trade publications that was about the nihilist Arby's account which is run by a guy who works here in Chicago um, who's not even a PR guy <laughs> he just he works in PR now but he got the job in PR because he did the nihilist Arby's account and like yeah, you know, just I don't think you can teach that kind of creativity. Really, it's kind of something you have to just have. So maybe organic. I would maybe say for myself, in my opinion, organic might be a little better on that side. 
feel like it depends on what company you work for. When I worked for We Love Fine, um, I was not just a community manager. I was did all their PR, I did all their marketing, and I'm like in there googling how to make an email. <laughs> right. <laughs> how, how do I make an email and send it out to all, like 500,000 people? Like I don't know. How do I Photoshop? Like I knew how to Photoshop the like, basic stuff. Like I made thumbnails for my YouTube channel. I made some cute things for my YouTube channel, but I never, you know, made an email like to market anything or right, like right. edited a photo shoot or <laughs> so I was just googling stuff as I was doing it because I had no idea about marketing they hired me for social media and I ended up doing all the other stuff and I was like oh I, I don't know about this guys but did it <laughs> well I will say that one thing college can teach you for sure is the ability to write press releases and more traditional social I guess more traditional PR but it definitely cannot teach you the creativity of replacing the Titan from Attack on Titan with a hot dog on National Hot Dog Day. Um, <laughs> that's not something that's covered in Marketing 102, you know. Well, and I and I don't think marketing and social media should. Okay, I, I look at social media as there's two sides of it. There's the side where you're paying for advertisements that get injected into people's feeds, and you're. Um, working with other companies to uh, market your stuff on their social media. And then there's the side where you're actually driving community engagement and interacting with the fans and building up more and more followers so that people see what you make, but also like they're, they're loyal to your brand, I guess, in a way. Because like I follow Arby's and um, I follow them because of their hilarious stuff that they post and they post anime content and video video game content and I think that's great and that does make like if someone says Arby's is disgusting I'm like oh no wait they're great and I'm like wait I haven't had Arby's in years <laughs> I don't know if they're great do you even have so Arby's I, out in California? yeah there was one down the street from my home when I was in Redondo Beach nice. um, but I don't know where one is near me now <laughs> but if I go home I can have Arby's <laughs> but you become like you become like tied to the brand in a way when you follow them on social media and you're interacting with them all the time even if you don't shop with them so it's good to build that community because like let's say you build a huge Facebook page and then Facebook goes the way of MySpace and you're like oh what now well if you've built that community across a bunch of platforms your audience is everywhere and you get to hold on to them and they they like your company outside of just the product if that makes any sense yeah, they're attached to your brand. Um, we, yeah. we talk a lot about branding in, in the world that I work in because we have a stream team and we brand everybody on our stream team with the logo. You know, So the idea is you watch one of our streamers, you enjoy the streamer's content, but you also recognize our little logo in the corner and we're branding the stream. And the idea is that when you're finished watching that streamer, maybe that streamer eventually does leave our stream team and maybe they don't continue with us. Maybe they quit streaming altogether, but hopefully you still remember that little logo in the corner. That's our, you know, our little Fox logo, which is not the one you're looking at right now. You're actually looking at a plushie from some, some import company. I don't even know which one anymore, but this, everything I have is made of foxes. It's just foxes everywhere. The same neon orange colored foxes. Do you also like baby metal? <laughs> <laughs> I am a fan of baby metal. Um, that, I, I have seen them in four states um, uh, several times, actually, including before Anime Expo. Was that two years ago? 2015? Anime Expo that they played a show in LA the I night before Day Zero. I could tickets to their show for the first few times they played in LA, and then I finally got one last month when I got to go see them live, which was amazing. They're really they good. They're so really fast. good live. Yeah, <laughs> they're really, really good live. Um, I mean, a lot of metal bands are really fantastic live, but Baby Metal like tops, super tops. And we are super off topic, but hey, that's okay. <laughs> um, Let's let's shift a little over to anime. So hopefully you like anime. You work for a company about an I anime. I do. I mean, um, I was raised watching it. <laughs> oh really? That's I wasn't going to ask a question about that, but that's actually a really good uh, little bit there. So tell me the first anime you watched was. I don't even know because I was raised watching it. But the first anime that I became obsessed with was Ranma One Half. Okay. Um, but my, I mean my. My mom and dad both played anime constantly when I was a kid, so I don't know, like, the first one I watched, because I don't even remember. <laughs> okay, so this is where we put the, the Dark Knight meme in, where we're just like, 
Yes, you merely adopted the anime. I was born into it, <laughs> molded by it. Yeah, that's that's something I don't hear very often. Uh, I was growing up with anime. Wow. Um, so based on the age that you provided earlier, they would have been the the mid '80s probably. So definitely so not. Yuda, Ranma One Half, uh, Lupin, yeah. Tenchi, uh, Dragon Half. Some stuff that I really shouldn't have been watching, like Dragon Pink. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's appropriate uh, for like a five-year-old, right? No, Mermaid no. Scar. I loved everything by Rumiko Takahashi. Uh, Meizani Koku. She did a um, uh, lot of early anime. <laughs> Do you have a favorite classic anime from that era? Uh, that, it's still Ranma One Half. Like, I have purple hair because I love shampoo so much. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Yeah, your, your hair, I don't know how well it comes across on Skype, guys, but her hair is definitely purple. And in the actual, like, uh, Skype picture that I have for her, her hair is, like, all super duper purple. Like, purple yeah, I've been growing it out. So it's like, it's like an ombre thing going on right now. Uh, in my Skype picture, it was completely purple at that time. Yeah, it was, like, <laughs> purple as the day is long. Uh, in L.A., at least. Here in Chicago, we don't really have long days. Uh, you know, we just have, like, three months of summer, and then the rest is winter forever. Uh, seven months of winter. It's like living in Westeros, you know. It's pretty terrible. <laughs> oh. So now we, I, I want to ask about contemporary anime, because you, obviously you're a big fan of anime from the, the classic era, which is really impressive, because honestly, in the 80s, it was not easy to get anime. I mean, I started watching anime probably sometime before 2000, and we were watching, like, bootleg VHSs at that point. I mean, <laughs> we are watching... Oh. Hard it was a lot bootlegs. easier for me because I grew up in Redondo Beach, which is next to Torrance, and Torrance is where Honda and Toyota are. So there were Japanese rental mm. video stores, and um, yeah. <laughs> okay. Like I, I could rent about like Neon Genesis Evangelion. I rented all of it when it was on VHS, and I was in elementary school. That's pretty heavy content for an elementary schooler. <laughs> I don't think I got it. How many was VHSs like, was that? That's like a billion VHSs. I think it was like four shelves of VHSs. Like, we would get one every time, and I think it was like two or three episodes of VHS back then. Yeah, that sounds about right. Yeah. Um, so my dad would take me, and I'd pick one out, and he'd pick out something else to watch. And <laughs> <laughs> Cool. That's that's a really cool story. That's uh, that's definitely, um, if I had a meme, I'd put it the Batman meme right now. I mean, that's <laughs> there's no way to be more OG anime than that. I mean, that's, you know. <laughs> That's as anime it's as it gets. It's a lot easier when you grow up in a town, like next to a town that is heavily influenced by Japanese culture. Yeah, so do you have a favorite contemporary anime? Um, well, Cowboy Bebop is one of my favorites, and that's like in the middle there. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> uh, I really love Little Witch Academia. It's great. I, um, no spoilers, I haven't seen the season on Netflix yet. I haven't gotten to it. Just watched it. It's on the list. <laughs> The new one. Uh, Rene is Rumiko Takahashi's new series, which is really good. Um, what else am I watching? Right now, I'm watching. Um, uh, well, I had it open on my computer. Uh, See, guys, uh, you get a job at Loot Crate Anime, you get to watch anime at work. Yeah. What could uh, be better than that? Like, what could be a cooler job than watching anime at work? I'm obsessed with Umaru. Uh, to my coworker's dismay, who doesn't like the way she treats her brother. <laughs> That's a very uh, interesting nitpick about Umaru. Like, of all the things that Umaru does that are not really socially, like, not socially, but are, like, socially, like, considered good virtues, not treating your brother well is probably not at the top of the list. <laughs> um, I just finished Edomanga Sensei. I really like that one. Uh, I'm excited to start a new game here in, a, in the next few days. Um, what else am I watching? Watch so much anime. <laughs> that's that's quite a list. I have I have seven shows this season, and that's too many. Like ooh, too many. I did finish Arrow Manga Sensei. Um, I almost died during Anime Expo because I got to interview the president of Anaplex, Mr. Ayakawa, and he literally well, said that Arrow Manga Sensei was his favorite anime. I was like, a good one. "What? Can you say that? <laughs> Are you allowed to say that? That trash anime is your favorite anime? Like, oh my god! <laughs> At least I know the Anaplex of America is in good hands. Like." <laughs> they will they will bring us more wonderful trash, which will make me smile. Yeah, so. I remember they posted they posted a picture of her like at night looking at weird things and 
a bunch of my followers were like, this is Agent Johnny. And I was like, oh, I have a bad reputation. <laughs> I mean, look, when your Twitter bio says that you co-founded Hentai HQ, you, you get a little bit of a reputation. <laughs> a little bit. Do you think that helped you boost it at all? Because, like, I've noticed there's a massive um, – I got to – at Anime Expo, I got to go to the Nutaku panel. Nutaku wants to be the steam of H games. And that was one of the only panels I went to where the line was, like, the size of the line for the trigger panel. And the trigger panel was in a giant ballroom. And the Nutaku panel was in a room that seated 200. So, uh, Hentai HQ, I just started that um, four months ago. Uh, so, we started off as a po- podcast called Two Hentai Queens. And uh, co-host, my co-host for that left right away because she didn't really have time. And um, the girl who edited the podcast was like, let's do a website, like, let's, and then let's make another podcast. So we did that, and that's how Hentai HQ came to be. And she's not super into hentai, but she uh, uh, does a lot of the uh, businessy type work. Is <laughs> where I'm, like, typing up articles that are inappropriate and finding Rule 34 things to write about all the time, stuff do like you, that. Do you run the hentai, the hentai HQ Twitter as well? Uh, me and her both share it. What does so. your tweet deck look like? I mean, holy <laughs> shit. Do you just, like, get lost in tweet deck? Or you just, do you have, like, dedicated monitors for tweet deck? I don't even use tweet deck. <laughs> How do you manage all those Twitter accounts? <laughs> I use the Twitter. Well, uh, here at uh, Loot Crate, we have Social Studio. And then um, at for my personal one in Hentai HQ, I just use the Twitter app. That's uh, that's mildly impressive. You should definitely get on that tweet deck game, though. I was Tw- using it, and I didn't like it. I like being like in the app, and it's always been more comfortable for me. Even when I'm here at work, I look at Social Studio, and then I go into actual Twitter. And, like, a- actual Twitter everything. is like way better. It's just that it's <laughs> so hard. Like I only manage four Twitter accounts, and I don't even I can't even do it from my phone. And our Twitter accounts don't get that much activity. Like, you, you're, <laughs> Loot Crate has, what, probably thousands of interactions per day? I guess I could look it up on Social Blade if I'm not lazy. Well, Loot Anime is not as big as Loot Crate, so <laughs> I don't see Still, the Loot though, Crate. I mean, and then your personal Twitter has a quarter million followers. <laughs> <laughs> eh, I treat that one like crap. <laughs> yeah, people seem to love it anyways. <laughs> Like, but I had the following before Hentai HQ, um, but the, the Hentai HQ website has been doing really well. And I'm des- currently working with Nutaku to design a character in one of their games called Armor Blitz. Um, I'm so. super familiar with Armor Blitz. I can't <laughs> say anything about Armor Blitz on this podcast or show or whatever we're calling it today, guys. But <laughs> let me just tell you that if you want to read about Armor Blitz... Check out the website because there's a there's literally an entire article about the Nintaku panel at Anime Expo and it talks about Armor Blitz, even though the Armor Blitz guys would only tell me their first names. So I'm gonna have a character in there. That's awesome. So. Super <laughs> awesome. Have they told you what tank it will be yet? Yes. Uh, something with the Wolverine in it. <laughs> okay, so it's gonna be a Russian tank then. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Wolverine. It is, I believe, we haven't confirmed everything yet because we're still we're still working on it. But right now, it's the uh, M10 Wolverine tank destroyer. That's the one, the M10. It's actually not a <laughs> Russian tank. I stand corrected. It is a U.S. tank destroyer. I am so sorry, all of my fans that out there that literally are. We have a lot of military otaku in our chat because they play. Yeah. They play all the tank games, so I kind of told them about this game, and they were kind of really excited, and now they're going to be upset because I assumed that it was a Russian tank because it was called the Wolverine. <laughs> so, yeah, sorry, guys, but nonetheless, so that's really cool. I mean, that's awesome, and Nutaku is just a fantastic company. The guys at Nutaku were, like, super cool. Oh, yeah, they're great. I'm going to be working with them on a lot of stuff coming up. They, they, they love the site. So. <laughs> Sneak preview. Yeah, there's a, there's a giant market for... H stuff. Um, nobody talks about it, but there's a big market for H. So much so that I've actually considered on multiple occasions now creating a gated off 18 plus part of our website just for that, because I really think that it brings in a lot of traffic. <laughs> I mean, every time I write about an H game, like well, I will say that our traffic is upwards to 3,000 people a day, and it's 
been up for less than five months. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's so. that's just, that's well, and to be honest, having your Twitter following behind it, I assume you tweeted about it. I don't tweet much about it on my personal Twitter account because my following skews really young female. Uh, <laughs> So I've kept it pretty separate besides the it's in my profile, which I just put it in there recently. <laughs> well, uh, that's uh, very impressive, I must say. As someone who struggles daily, I mean, we're a news site, so we don't we don't have the draw that a lot of other sites have. But as somebody who struggles with traffic on a daily basis, that is impressive amount of traffic. Uh, even viral articles that we publish don't usually get that many hits per day. So I yeah, was very impressed. It's crazy how fast it's growing. Uh, we could do another interview if you want all about that <laughs> that sounds like an excellent idea actually uh we outside should, of my work hours we should speak talk yeah about thing. <laughs> we can't talk about hentai at, at loot crate there's a line right there's a line that yeah. cannot be crossed the line of the is the hentai is the line no we can talk about anime you can watch anime at work you can probably watch ichi anime at work right no i try to stay away from the lewd stuff. <laughs> Nothing too lewd. So, uh, like, where's they know the line? I, they know what I do outside of work, but, you know, I, I'm not going to watch Monster uh, Miss May on work. <laughs> on <time. laughs> okay. Fair enough. Uh, what about high school High school DxD? Is that appropriate for work? No. Maybe? No? No, okay. It's a little... in one of our crates coming up. <laughs> but, so then you should be able to watch it at work if it's in the crate, it seems like. I mean... <laughs> okay, so this is, this is a blurry line. The there's, line is there's blurry. There's people that sit around me that don't watch anime, so I have to, you know. <laughs> Do you ever get a weird look when you're watching something? I mean, because, you know, I lived with I my can't. parents for a while, so I got those weird looks. <laughs> when they came in, like, what are you watching? Beth, Beth walked up to my computer the other day, who you talked to him for a last interview, mm -hmm. uh, and I had a gif of a horse head, like a horse person losing her mind, and it just said husband. And she was like, What? are you doing and I'm like I don't know you're like this is my life you know it's don't worry about it's, it don't worry about it that's yeah right. I mean I experience that to a much lesser extent when I hang out with people that are not involved in the anime and video gaming community because you'll say something and they'll be like or you'll say a word or you'll you'll say a meme and they'll just look at you like what what is wrong with you and you'll be like, listen if you spent all your time hanging out with 15 year olds you would understand and then they look at you even weirder because you just told them you spend your time hanging out with 15 year olds like on the internet not in real life guys i am not a pedophile it's like that comes up more often than i would like it to a real weird world <laughs> oh, i love it can't get over it you know there's there's no better community well that's a total lie. there's no better community than the anime and hentai community but that's not really super true there's there's good communities out there it's a good community though all right now we will switch gears once again to talking a little bit about like your daily job activities and things so, run me through kind of your average day. I come in, I go through all the comments that happen in the middle of the night and moderate them. So we do like to keep the anime family friendly. Um, so if anybody's, you know, being obnoxious or using the swears. No <laughs> swearing <laughs> on my page. Sorry. I should leave comments. Um, so I go in and I moderate all the comments and, and reply to comments and interact with the fans. And when that whole queue is taken care of, um, I start scheduling for the rest of the day. So I schedule, um, I schedule our posts out through 10 a.m. the next day so that I have enough time to come in from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. and just get all of those comments taken care of. And then, um every day to repeat <laughs> that doesn't sound and then terrible I moderate comments throughout the day com I moderate engage and all that throughout the day when I start to see them I didn't even up. know you guys had forums um comments on Facebook Instagram oh duh Instagram. yeah <laughs> My brain just was like, I apparently have a, a, I'm like, oh yeah, Twitter, Twitter, Twitter. I've been, I've been on that Twitter game a lot lately. So, ah, uh, we're talking about the Facebook. Yeah, because Facebook is, is a terrible cesspool of terror. Yeah, Instagram can be too. <laughs> yeah, I have a personal Instagram, but we don't have a company Instagram. Um, just because honestly, who wants to deal with that? Like, oof. Right. Oh, I love Instagram. I mean, our Instagram has a ton of engagement, but every once in a while I post something and people take it to a place it shouldn't go. Like I posted a um, Doom Fist versus One Punch Man because they they both use the one punch attack. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
and people made it about race. And I was like, no, guys. <laughs> Why does it always end up there? You don't, you don't gotta do this. <laughs> you can make it about Terry Crews not being doofus because we're all upset about that. But other than that... <laughs> I may be the only person in the world that gives no craps that Terry F Cruz is not Doomfist. I was like, whatever, Blizzard will pick an actor. But to be fair, <laughs> yeah. I haven't played Overwatch in like three months. I've been completely stuck on the freaking Player Unknown's Battlegrounds train for since it came out. Mm. I just got Overwatch maybe like three months ago. So. <laughs> Probably not a lot of time for video games in your world. Uh, no, I usually carry my 3DS so that I can game times where I'm waiting for something else. <laughs> you can't, <laughs> or you can't see it, but I'm holding mine right now. I realize, I keep realizing that you can't see it, but I have the Pikachu Yellow Edition 3DS. Um, so are you as enraged as I am that Nintendo has decided to stop production of 3DSs entirely? Well, they haven't announced they are stopping productions of 3DSs entirely. They stopped production of the smaller 3DS with the interchangeable plates. Mm -hmm. uh, and they started production of the 2DS that flips closed. Right. You know, we don't, they haven't stopped 3DS completely. It's just all 3DS XLs now, which seems, I love. Well, 3DS. yeah, I think the XLs are good, but it seems a foregone conclusion at this point, at least to me. I mean, I'm no expert in the industry, but mobile's not my, is not my forte, but it does seem like that's the where it's going in terms of, uh, <laughs> in terms of production, which is a little upsetting because mm, Nintendo I earlier think, this year. Oh, I sorry, think go it's going to the Switch. <laughs> well, I have one of those I, too, so I can't be too they made They made a new console that's mobile, so it outperforms the 3DS, but I kind of feel like they'll always have a 3DS equivalent, because I feel like the 3DS is geared a lot more towards a younger audience um, than the Switch is, and a lot of younger kids will break a Switch pretty instantaneously, so <laughs> like yeah, a lot of my friends can't buy them because they're like, I have a five-year-old, and they will break that screen so fast, but they're fine with the, the 2DS, so. Yeah, and the 2DS fills that niche really well, and it's cheap, which is good. Yeah. So, I'm just but, sad that we won't get any more cool edition 3DSs, and there will, of course, well, be a maybe near... Maybe 3DS XLs. Maybe, maybe. There haven't, we in the States haven't gotten that many good 3DS XL editions at all, actually. I, I, I have the Pikachu I yellow one. I have the you have the Majora's Mask one, and then there's there was the Monster was very Hunter hard one. <laughs> yeah, I, I did not get the Majora's the Majora's Mask. I'm not a huge uh, it's confession time, kitties. I'm not a huge Zelda fan. Um, so bad. Uh, everybody loves Zelda, not me. I, I played Breath That's of the Wild. That's how I learned how to read. So. <laughs> That's. <laughs> You've had Zelda a very sports. interesting life growing up with anime. Next, you're gonna tell me you're fluent in seven languages and um, <laughs> Portuguese but is one of them, you know, or something. Zelda came out. I think I was like two when Zelda came out, mm -hmm. and my grandma was reading it to me as I played it, and then she, finally she came home one day with a giant box of on phonics, and she was like, you're learning how to read so you can play this game without me reading it to you. Okay. And I could read chapter books by the time I was three because of Zelda, so I'm like, Zelda is part of my origin story. <laughs> you have a pretty good origin story. <laughs> it's a pretty impressive, I must say. Yeah, so reading from Zelda, anime from the time you were practically in the crib, um, you were basically, you know, literally born to be what you do now. Social media guru of godliness. <laughs> that's, uh, that's very impressive. So you are playing uh, 3DS games. Are you playing Overwatch? Um, is it PC or console? Very I'm playing on the PC. I, a fan sent me a PC so I could finally play Overwatch. <laughs> that's impressive. You have some, some very wealthy fans. Because I've always been an Apple girl, and um, and then I was like, I have I have all Nintendo and Apple. I can't play Overwatch. And somebody sent me a gaming laptop, which I can play Overwatch on. So I was very excited. <laughs> there, you, that's that's a pretty good thing to get excited about. Uh, that's pretty hype right there. Not going to lie, super hype on that. Someday someone will send me a gaming PC, and I will send them thousand dollars in exchange so it won't be quite the same <laughs> but you know it'll be similar similar experience all right let's see we ha I have like two or three more questions and then you know okay. we'll just we'll free form it of anything you think you want to tell people but so let's let's go with the the how to get where you are question um so let's say i am in high school because i don't know every, let's say i think you said your audience skews towards younger girls so let's say that i'm 17 
18 years old and I see the job that you have and I want a job like that. What's your advice for getting that job? I have no idea. <laughs> Not I the answer feel... I was expecting. <laughs> I worked at Whole Foods and then my YouTube channel started doing well and then I did YouTube full time and then I accidentally got a job with We Love Fine. And then I decided that I was no longer happy there because I was had too many titles. And I was like, ah, oh, this entertainment earth is hiring. They make, they, they sell toys. Go there. And I applied and got that right away. And then three months later, Loot Crate was like, hey, uh, we, we, you're an anime nerd. You want to come over here? And I was like, yeah, it's closer to home. <laughs> and I just get to work with anime. So I'm really into that. And we're just over here. <laughs> so I feel like I accidentally got my job and all of my jobs, and I don't know how to help anyone. <laughs> well, that is a very honest answer. Uh, we always appreciate an honest answer. Uh, I think that's pretty impressive, actually. A pretty impressively honest answer. Not the one I was expecting, I will admit. Uh, so I, I will say that happening onto the job you have is more often than not the way that people end up drinking, uh, end up drinking, <laughs> getting I a just, job. Just, this is not beer. I mean, it looks like it, but it's I mean, I, I'm drinking beer. This is Cape Cod Bleach Blonde, but it, there can't be an episode of the show with no name without alcohol. It's not possible. Um, it's actually in the rules, in the by rules of the show. Oh, no. well, mine's iced tea and sparkling water, so I totally cheated. <laughs> That's fine. It looks kind of like beer. Now, we normally do the show on Sunday night at 10 o'clock, so normally it's not a problem. And I will point out that I'm in the central time zone and we're recording this after 6 p.m., so, you know. It's it's after 5 o'clock here. I don't even have to say and it's I 5 o'clock somewhere. Yeah, well, that's true. I mean, you could work at a distillery. <laughs> I have a, a, I work across the street from, actually now it's Sunatory. It used to be Beam, now it's Sunatory. Sunatory bought them, and they just drink all day. Uh, they come into the cafeteria smelling of whiskey at, like, 10 o'clock in the afternoon 10 o'clock in the morning, morning. it's <laughs> pretty funny actually uh, I would love to work there someday but I imagine it would be very bad for my health <laughs> so okay onward that was a uh, that was supposed to be like a 10 minute answer so now I have to I have to find another question <laughs> um so what's your advice for growing a twitter following uh, an organic twitter following like your personal twitter which has its 250,000 almost followers uh, that's also, like, accidental. <laughs> uh, I think a lot of it was I was tagged by a lot of uh, people who have huge followings, and it kind of just grew that way. Um, like, I would be at parties with people, and they'd be like, this girl has purple hair, and then I'd be like, oh, you have millions of followers. <laughs> that happens. <laughs> so I don't think I did it on purpose, but um, I can say that I've grown company Twitter followings very successfully, and I've always done that by staying on like staying on trend with hashtags, creating content that asks a question that makes that drives people to engage with your content, or saying something completely outlandish that makes them want to retweet because they just don't know how to deal with it. <laughs> Do you ascribe to the more tweets is better or less tweets is better? Um, for Twitter, I say go nuts. For Facebook, less is more. For Instagram, less is more because their algorithm punishes you for posting too much. Um, but on Twitter, I mean, you don't want to get to the point where you're annoying, but there's, I mean, you could tweet once an hour and it would not bug any of your followers as long as it wasn't the same thing every hour. And we'll just, you know, you can't just tweet the same exact image every hour and hope that you eventually become famous. That doesn't work. I'm going to make a Twitter that just does that. Just I, I have a every hour. <laughs> I have a small network of Twitter bots that uh, tweet pictures, um, and they they basically just do that because they pull their pictures from various boroughs, and so there's only so many images. So if you go back through their history, cause some of them have been running for like two years. So if you go back through their history, like, you'll see the same like twelve images crop up like two hundred times, and you're like, oh, okay, this is the most annoying Twitter bot. If you had to change one thing at your day job right now, what would it be? Ooh. Uh, you, you can't say I'd like to be able to watch hentai at work. That you can't say that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I would uh, like to sit in the community team. Uh, hey, I love the community team; they're great. But whenever I sit next to the anime team, we just nerd out all the time, and I'm like, yeah, but then I might also not get anything done. 
you did mention <laughs> at Anime Expo that occasionally work doesn't get done because of the massive amount of anime talk that is going yeah. on. We had a meeting today. We do a meeting every day for with the anime team. Mm-hmm. We had a meeting today, and ten minutes of it was maybe meeting time, and the rest of it was we were talking about anime. <laughs> Yeah, so. that um, that sounds like a job that a lot of our fans would be interested in, to be honest. Oh, and nobody, you guys shouldn't ever apply for jobs. There. Mm, don't do that. Mm, no, no, no. You don't want to watch anime all day. I, I think that's that's pretty much all I have. Uh, you, you've answered my questions so quickly. We, we've on, we've only been recording for like probably about forty minutes of actual time, so forty six minutes total. But we had a, a small snafu on the on the Skype side because Skype is horrible. So now I shall ask you: Is there anything that you think you would want to share with? An, uh, an audience full of, you know, people that might be interested or aspiring to work in social media, work in community management, do what you do and get to watch anime at the office. Uh, find a company that has a community team that's separate from their marketing team. Like, that was a hard lesson for me to learn. Um, you don't want to do marketing and social media because it's like, it's two different brain types of brain working where you're like, oh, I've got to figure out all these numbers and do all these things, and you're like, wait, well, how am I supposed to create memes and joke around with people when I'm trying to think about how this advertising is going to perform? So definitely find a company that separates the two. Um, I think it's the most beneficial situation if you want to do social media and actually manage a community rather than be a social media ad manager. And a lot of companies try to speak those in together, don't let them. Don't do it. <laughs> you did mention at Anime Expo that you don't deal with metrics at all, which sort of surprised no. me. Conversions and metrics aren't part of your job. So no. maybe we can expound, expound on that a little bit because I think that's something interesting. That I don't. I never considered that the two could be separate, I guess. I mean, I guess I, I do know because community management, like I, I guess I think, you know, community management, there's forums, there's, there's groupings. That, you know, Blizzard has a small army of community managers that they pay money to just police their forums. They don't do marketing. So yeah. I guess you kind of do a little bit of both, but you're saying if you want to do what you do, don't. I don't do marketing. Like I'll do posts for the crate, but they're created by our copywriters and our uh, our marketing team. So I just have to make sure the posts go live, and then I schedule those all out for them. Okay. And but I don't I don't do any I don't make that stuff. Um, all of the posting throughout the day we're sharing news, talking about what anime is coming out, asking people like their favorite anime songs or their favorite the best girl or favorite anime cat, like all that stuff is me. Um, so I create all that imagery and do all that in Hot Dogs and Titans. <laughs> hot Dogs and um, Titans. So marketing isn't really in my job at all now, which I love. I love not. Uh, <laughs> dealing with that anymore. I'm like, oh, you just need me to schedule out these posts? Good to go. <laughs> and then a whole other team does all the ads and stuff like that. I don't even touch that. Awesome. I, so that's, that's good information. That's absolutely good to know. So, guys, if you want to do social media, do follow that path. And if you want to do marketing, follow the marketing path. Not, yeah. And make sure that you're not at a company that combines the two, because that yeah. will suck. They, they like to, uh, a lot of companies like to think that same thing but it's totally not <laughs> well now that you explain it in the way that you just have it definitely doesn't sound like the same thing yeah because you know there's there should be your you, there should be copywriters writing copy for ad that should be being put on art by artists and then all your job should be if your community management is just to throw that up on social media and then your yeah. job should be engaging with fans not creating creative work or creating creative work for fans not for advertisement i guess is the better yeah. way to say that Cool. I do the creative to drive the engagement. They do the creative to drive sales. <laughs> that uh, that must be nice. Not not big burden for sales. It must be nice not to have like someone chasing after you with a little huh. a little a little what do you call a little yeah. little chomper guys? You call them chompers. The chompers from Mario. Yeah. Chomp, chomp, the chain <laughs> chompers, going numbers numbers numbers. Yes, hello, cat. Yep. I hear you down there. Sorry, my. That was is, my last um, job. That doesn't and... sound fun. And I, I would double their goals for me every time, and it was still not enough. And I'm like, I don't want to do this anymore. So it, it, it's definitely relieving to come here and not have to deal with any of that. That does sound great. All right, well, plug your, your many social medias. I guess there's probably only a few of them, but plug your stuff. <laughs> and, uh, uh, make sure you follow Loot Anime everywhere. Uh, we're on Instagram, Twitter, Tumblr, uh, Facebook, Pinterest. 
which nobody knows about on Pinterest yet, but if you look up Loot Anime, it's there. Could be the first follower, maybe. I haven't looked. <laughs> I don't have uh, a Pinterest. We're, uh, I think all of the... That's all we have so far. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. That's Tumblr. quite a, that's yep. a lot of things. <laughs> Cat and then I'm and... Agent Shawnee on all of the things. <laughs> okay. And is there any closing words that you would like to say about Loot Crate Anime, your fantastic employer, or, you know, anime in general, or would you like to say that Aramanga Sensei is the greatest anime of all time, <laughs> like Mr. Ayakawa said? Uh, Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid is the best anime of all time. And <laughs> you there's, a persuasive, there's a persuasive argument for that. I can agree. <laughs> uh, and Loot Anime has some awesome crates coming up so I would definitely uh, subscribe if you haven't already and I do have a discount code if you guys want it. Plug it. Uh, you can use agents to get 10% off your loot anime. So. <laughs> we don't have one yet so use hers. We're still in the process yeah. of getting one. <laughs> Alright, so there you go. And, you there's, and there's some good stuff coming up. And I'm wow. looking at the next five crates and I'm just like, You're like oh, I want... Thing. Can I just have them now? <laughs> I know I get them because I work on it, but can I have them now? <laughs> and I have to wait like everybody else. <laughs> Must wait. How unfortunate. All right. Well, I am Fiona Kit uh, Friona Schweit from Kitsuga.com. This has been the show with no name. Special interview portion with Shawnee Hale. You guys will be seeing this probably on Friday, hopefully. Today is Wednesday. We're recording on Wednesday. You'll be seeing it on Friday. And you'll still have a few days to pick up the loot crate for this month. Because Friday will be the 21st, and I think you have until the 24th, right? 27th. 27th. That was my, like sec my second guess. Sorry, my cat <laughs> is literally cr crawling onto me right now trying to attack me because I have been home for 40 minutes and not petted the cat at all. Oh. Very very clingy okay. cat. If I was at home, I would be in the same situation. I have two. <laughs> yeah, I only have one, and she's like, pet me or die. I will actually, She's like, I will actually harm you with my claws if you do not pet me. So, Every morning I wake up to my cat brushing my hair with her claws, and I'm like... <laughs> you're like, my eyes are, like, right there. Could you just, could you not, you know, I need those to see. <laughs> Do the other side. Yeah. yeah. yeah I know that <laughs> feeling. All right, thank you so much for coming on the show t tonight, and I hope you have an excellent rest of your week.